the idea is to test the effects of salivary amylase, which is in your saliva and it digests starch. So I've set up three test tubes already. The first test tube has saliva and water in it. The second test tube has water and starch, and the starch has kind of settled to the bottom, so I need to make sure I shake it before I take any samples. And then my third test tube is saliva and starch. And I used my own saliva for this, but I didn't think you really needed to see me spitting into test tubes. So the first thing we're going to do is conduct a Benedict's test on each one of these. The Benedict's test is for monosaccharides. So I'm going to take a sample of each one. I'm going to put like 20 drops of each one into a second test tube. There we get a little bit more. Okay, so there's my first one. I'm making sure that I'm not um, cross-contaminating with my pipettes or anything, so I'm using the same pipettes for each test tube every single time. drops of starch and saliva in my last sample. Okay, so now I need to add an equal amount of Benedict's to each one. So I'm going to add 20 drops of Benedict's. You can see that the Benedict's reagent is blue naturally. And it won't actually change any color until we heat it. So I'm going to take the test tubes. I'm going to make sure that I label them as well with the one, two, and three because otherwise I won't know when I'm done. And I'm going to put them in a boiling water bath. And if they're positive for monosaccharides, they're going to turn orange after about five minutes. So I have my hot water bath over here. Boiling water bath, I'm just going to stick them in and we'll go back and look at those in a couple minutes. So now we're going to get our results from our Benedict's test. This is again the solutions that have been mixed at room temperature. So this is test tube one. It had the water and saliva. Here is test tube two. This was starch and water. And then test tube three, which was water, not water, sorry, saliva and starch, looks like this. So you should record all of those results on your table. While we're waiting for the Benedict's test, we're also going to conduct an iodine test. And an iodine is specifically for starch. We're going to use the spot plate, and I'm just going to put two or three drops of each sample in the different spots. So this one is water and saliva. This one is water and starch. Let me make sure I've swirled it sufficiently to make sure we get a good sample here. Okay. Then we have saliva and starch as our last test. Okay. So I'm going to add iodine. Iodine will test positive if starch is present, 
and it'll change from sort of a yellowy color to a blackish, purplish color. And it won't be throughout, but I'm going to stir it with some toothpicks. And you should be able to see and make a note in your lab handout as to which one of these is a positive result. And you might even want to denote how positive it is if you think one of them is darker than another one. Remember that this test is being conducted at room temperature. So this reaction with salivary amylase in our body usually takes place at a higher temperature. Uh, root temperature is about 27 degrees and our bodies at about 37 degrees.